Welcome back once again, you CISSP wannabes. I'm Colin Weaver, and these are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day. Every single day, I give you two questions to ponder, contemplate, and think about. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, first question today. Okay, crime prevention through environmental design, or CEPTED, or CPTED, however you want to pronounce that, um, is an initiative to go in and reduce the incidence of uh, criminal activity or criminal behavior in a physical environment by using environmental design characteristics. Uh, and so my question to you is, is which of these, and I want you to pick three, which of these options are the, the broad topic characteristics of CEPTED or CPTED? Go ahead and uh, give those a read. Click pause if you need to, then click play. We'll break them all out. First answer you're looking for is natural access control. Natural access control endeavors to go in and try and uh, clearly delineate or define the difference between public and private space in an area. Uh, it does this by going in and using lighting and fencing, uh, landscaping and things of that nature to go in and, and really signal to people that this is a public place where you can go and over here is a private place, don't go there. Next good answer on here is natural surveillance. What natural surveillance endeavors to do is to go in and create a situation where people feel like if they do something, they're going to be seen doing it. And uh, in the psychology of crime, um, a lot of times people choose to do things, particularly vandalism related things, uh, based not necessarily on the reward for doing it, but on whether or not they feel like they'll get seen or get caught if they do do it. So uh, by creating a sort of natural surveillance environment where people feel like they're being seen, if they are to do something inappropriate, it decreases the likelihood that they're willing to do that. Then the third item on the list that you're looking for is natural territorial reinforcement. One of the key things associated with this breakdown is that it goes in and endeavors to create a situation where people feel like they have a sense of ownership in the physical environment where they are. And when people have a feeling of ownership in an environment, it makes them protective of that environment. Now, I'm not trying to suggest to you that the people who are gathering in a particular area who see somebody who's doing something inappropriate should go bum rush them and sweep the leg. It's Johnny, your sweep the leg. You have a problem with that. But they should definitely go and, and let somebody uh, like law enforcement or the site security or something like that know that, that something inappropriate is taking place. Uh, so this whole idea of, hey, this is ours and we're going to protect and defend it and we're going to do so in a way that's responsible, like going and getting you know, physical security. Okay, those are the three answer choices that are the right ones here. There actually is a fourth component to SEPTED, which is maintenance and activity support. Uh, maintenance as if to say you take care of the physical environment, which expresses a sense of ownership. Things don't fall into disrepair and disarray, and so when things are well maintained, you can, people can tell that they are owned and therefore cared for, and uh, kind of lends itself back to things like natural surveillance and territorial uh, uh, support. And then also, you know, active, or, or uh, encouraging activity in the environment or activity support, again, by going and creating an environment where people want to be or can be in the space uh, that are supposed to be legitimately there within the public spaces. Okay, when, here comes question number two. When you're talking about fire suppression, we usually break fires down into different classes using letters based upon the types of materials that, that support uh, the fire. So given the list that you see right here in terms of these class numbers, which of the following deals with fires that are supported by, uh, or excuse me, are started or supported by you know, gasoline, petroleum, or you know, oil-based fires? Go ahead and uh, figure out which one it is. Click pause if you need to, then click play, and we'll, we'll talk it up. First item on the list is Class A. Class A fires are fires that are started by common combustibles, things like wood and paper, cloth, uh, uh, plastics, uh, th th trash, things like that. Those are what Class A fires um, are, are categorized as. The answer that we're looking for in this question is actually Class B. Uh, class B is flammable liquids like petroleum, gas, oil, things of that nature. So Class B is the answer choice that we're looking for here. Class C fires are fires involving electrical equipment, uh, motors, things of that nature. Class D fires are associated with combustible metals like uh, potassium, magnesium, and finally, class K fires are kitchen fires. These are usually associated with uh, uh, combustibles, you know, animal fats, vegetable fats, uh, things like that that will typically catch on fire on a cooktop in a kitchen.
All right, two questions down. Awesome. How'd you do? Let me know in the comments. Uh, please subscribe if you want to get these questions every single day because I do them every day. Today's question was on uh, crime prevention through environmental, de environmental design. And our second question was on just classes of fires and making sure that you understand what each one of those classes um, are and what types of uh, combustibles they deal with. So uh, that's it. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow.